Okay, lecture 35. We're going to talk in this lecture about maximizing the desired product and series reaction. In the previous lecture, we talked about maximizing the desired product and parallel reactions. We saw earlier that the undesired product could be minimized by adjusting the reaction condition for example changing the temperature or the concentration and by choosing the proper reactor and again this was for parallel reactions for series of consecutive reactions the most important variable is time whether it is the real time for a batch reactor or the space time for a flow reactor because space time represents the resonance time in a way correct the higher the space time the higher the resonance time of the molecules inside the reactor for flow reactors okay. consider the following consecutive reactions in which b is the desired product so a goes to b first reaction and then b goes to c the second reaction so this is series reactions let's start with a batch reactor the question would be when should the reaction be stopped to obtain the maximum amount of b when should i stop the reaction in order to get the maximum amount of b in other words i should ask let's find the optimum time the optimum reaction time okay so let's go through the design algorithm the five step design algorithm for the system starting with the design equation ended up with evaluating everything through the equation we get this concentration profile right so we have ca cb and cc you see that ca is continuously decreasing this is because a is a reactant and the concentration of c is increasing with time so more c is forming with time however the concentration of b at the beginning it's increasing and until it reaches a maximum value right until it reaches the maximum value and then the concentration of b decreases after that why is that well you know the reason any idea yep it must be related to the rate of reaction exactly because at the beginning at the beginning the rate of formation of b through reaction one is more than the rate of consumption of b through reaction two so at the beginning b is formed at a rate that is higher than the its consumption rate through reaction two why is that well obviously because at the beginning we have high concentration of a therefore high rate of reaction for reaction one while we have still small amount of concentration of b therefore therefore the rate of the second reaction will be low so the concentration of a so of b continues increasing until it reaches a maximum value at which the rate of production of b equals the rate of consumption of b of course so um, after that after that what happens so we're here so, um, you see that the concentration of a has decreased a lot right however the concentration of b is appreciably high correct appreciably high therefore now we have the rate at which b is consumed through the second reaction is high due to the high concentration of b while the rate of the production of b through the first reaction is low because of the low concentration of a so due to the fact that b is getting formed at a rate that is lower than the rate at which is being consumed so it's being consumed at a rate which is higher than the rate at it which is being produced therefore the concentration of b continues 
decreasing. Tamam. Obviously, we can see that we have an optimum time. For example, after half an hour, we should stop because that's when I get the maximum concentration of B. If I waited longer, then some of B will be consumed through this reaction. Right? And I don't want this to happen. Or in other words, B will be consumed at a rate that is more than the rate at which it is being formed. If I choose lower time, if I choose lower time, I know B is still increasing, but unfortunately, I did not give it enough time to produce enough amount of B. So I'll need to wait more. Mathematically, you can find this point here by setting dcb by dt equals to zero and this is of course at the optimum time okay if we have a continuous flow reactor whether it was a plug flow reactor or a ccr then the question would be how large should the reactor be or how fast should the volumetric flow rate be to obtain the maximum amount of B because by changing the volume of the reactor or changing the volumetric flow rate I will really change the residence time inside the reactor or the residence time of the molecules inside the reactor correct maybe it's better to ask to find the optimum tau the optimum tau which represents the residence time again here Shabab will solve the problem many times so we choose a value for tau and solve the cre algorithm to find the concentration the concentrations at the exit of the reactor then i choose another tau and i solve the problem again whether using excel or polymath or any other software and find the exit concentrations and then again i change the value of tau and find the concentrations at the exit and then i plot so this plot and again you see that we have a optimum tau at which the cb is maximum mathematically dc b by d tau equals to zero at the tau optimum or tau is v over epsilon not again shabab if the tau was very large tau tamam, very large tau that means that the molecules of B is saying long, long enough that it will start converting to C. Tamam. However, if you choose low tau, that means the resistance time is low. That means I do not have enough ch chance to convert enough amount of A to the product B. Therefore, Small tau is bad, large tau is bad. We have an optimum tau. Okay, so with this, we finish the first segment. We'll meet soon with the second segment.